Hey, it's Cam for Titania, and today I have a very highly anticipated video for you. I have a video of the Samsung Galaxy S2. This is my full review of this device. I'll be getting into the hardware, the software, everything about this fabulous new Android device. One of the most highly anticipated devices of the year, and in my opinion, the best one so far. So let's just do a quick hardware tour. At the bottom we have the home button, as well as the menu and back buttons. I love this new three button layout. I never use the search button, and this lets you really differentiate. So you can have the home button in the middle, which is physical, and then easily know the menu and the back on either side, which is really great. At the top, you've got the earpiece, the front facing 1.3 megapixel camera, and the proximity and light sensors. So that's just a really nice way that's set up there. On the back, we have the 8 megapixel shooter that shoots 1080p video, as well as full autofocus. You got a flash there, 8 megapixel, really nice. If you want to check out more of my camera shots and video shots, there's an annotation up top. At the top, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, just a normal headphone jack. We have a microphone there, and then another microphone at the bottom next to the micro USB jack. Which, if you're wondering where the HDMI out is, this is an MHL port, so it allows you to do both, which is a really great new feature. So, 8.4 millimeters thick, 116 grams, 4.3 inch WVGA, 800 by 480, Super AMOLED Plus display, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor. Here's the back. It's a very nice textured plastic. Really like it. Much, much better than what they had before. If we take the back cover off, we can see the SIM slot inside, as well as the micro SD card area. Comes with 16 gigs built in storage, 1 gig of RAM, 1650 milliamp hour, 1650 milliamp hour battery right there. So that's the hardware tour. Let's just put this back cover back on and get to some of the things that I don't like so much about the hardware on this device. The speaker, which you can see right there, is not very good. It's tinny. It doesn't sound very full sounding, and it's just not a very good speaker. So that's my thoughts on the speaker. Samsung should have definitely put in a better speaker, and I would not have minded a little bit extra weight for a much better speaker. The other problem is, when playing games and doing some flash sometimes and running a lot of applications, the device gets hot. It overheats. And I guess that's understandable because of how thin and light and small the device is, but it, I don't think that getting hot is, it gets too hot. It's not just a little bit hot, it gets very hot. So there's some overheating issues, not too good. And if you're wondering what I, my battery life was with this device, battery life on this device is good, but it's not quite as good as some of the better Android devices. I must say I have seen Android devices with better battery life, and that is disappointing. And I guess it's because it's so thin, it has a dual core processor, 1.2 gigahertz Exynos, so it's got a really powerful processor, a really big bright screen, so I guess the battery does get sucked up pretty fast. So that is understandable, but battery life could be better, the speaker is a joke, and overheating issues. Now we can move on to the software of this device. We can see here that this is running TouchWiz 4.0, and... You may say, oh, I hate skins, I hated the original TouchWiz, but they have actually done quite a bit of great things here. You can see, if we try to add some new stuff, we've got our widgets, and you can scroll through them, and this is nice, because unlike most devices where you have to drag one over and then go all from the beginning, this one lets you add a bunch of widgets all at once, which is a really nice feature. The other great thing about TouchWiz is there are resizable widgets. For example, if we add in this month, this, um, wait, where's a good one to demo this? We'll add in the email widget. There's the email widget right there. You can see it. If you click and hold it, you can resize it. So you can see we can resize there, resize again. Resizing the widgets is really a nice feature. So, fully resizable widgets, really easy to add new stuff, so a great customizable interface. You can see here, if we get rid of this, we can resize this widget. Like so. So it is great that you have all the resizability, resizability options. 
So TouchWish 4.0, it changes quite a bit of the look of the device, but overall it's a very light skin. It's not like Sense. You basically get a different, better launcher with customizable shortcuts at the bottom. You get side swiping, you have a different, slightly different look, you have a better widget interface. And it's just a pretty, it's not, it's pretty good, honestly, like, TouchWiz is pretty good. You have some of these motion features where you can pick up a widget and go from screen to screen like this. There are some other motion features I'll show you later. So there are some of those added motion things, like putting it down on a table will automatically silence your phone, like that. So that is pretty cool. We'll go to the settings here and show you. Motion. So you can see there's lots of things. Motion activation, turnover, tilt, panning. If we are on a web page like Engadget here and we want to zoom in, you can just do that. It'd be a cool feature if it only required one finger because then it would be more efficient than multi, like doing the gesture. But since it requires two fingers, you may as well just do a pinch gesture. That's the next thing. This device is lightning. It is so fast with its dual core processor. You can just fly through Engadget. You just fly so fast. You can double tap to resize text automatically. Just an incredibly fast device. Pinching and zooming so fast. So just a really fast device especially for web browsing, so really great. We can show you some Flash video quick. So you can see it is very fast and Flash video loads and is smooth. So software on this device is fast, very efficient, very buttery smooth, lots of just great animations. It's not overdoing it like Sense UI is, but it still is a fast, efficient interface for getting things done. And TouchWiz adds some nice additions and doesn't really detract from the experience all that much. Um, just a general Android thing. I still, I still think having to manage tasks like this is absolutely a joke. Like that should just Android should be past the point where you have to manage your tasks like that. Uh, if we go into the gallery here. I'd like to show you some things where the device is too fast. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's so fast that the gallery interface doesn't really work. Like if you try to do this, normally it should scroll through all your photos, but it's kind of broken. And everything sort of zooms in a little too fast. You don't really get to appreciate the animations. Because it's just so fast, you can't enjoy those really cool animations this device has to offer. If you're wondering all that squawking, it's coming from this bird here. Um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Thank you, sister. Um, so, my final conclusions are, it's an amazing device. It's lightning fast. It's thin. It's light. It takes great video and pictures. It is just a great all-around device. It has this amazing, bright, vivid screen. Great for watching YouTube videos. My complaints with this device are so small. It has a not very great speaker. It overheats a little. And battery life could be a little bit better. But overall, this device is so bang on perfect, it's a 9 out of 10 for me. It's a, just an amazing device. 9 out of 10, great device. Just all around, it's an amazing device. And it is the best Android device this whole year. And if you're going to buy a smartphone now, this should be the one you're buying. It is just such a good device all around. This should be the smartphone you're purchasing right now. Nothing else really competes, especially on the Android front. iPhone... 4 doesn't compete with this at all. We haven't seen iPhone 5 yet, but this is the best smartphone of the year so far. That's been Cam for Titania doing a review of the Samsung Galaxy S2. 9 out of 10, and I'll see you in the next video.